So in your exam guidelines, you will note each topic. They will tell you exactly what you need to study for each topic in the exam guideline. Right. Now, if we look at life sciences, and your teacher must have, you've been doing life science. This is now your third year in the FET phase where you are doing life science. And there are certain questions that you need to know. For instance, 1.1, if you open your exam paper, whether it's June, September or November, your very first question, 1.1, is going to be a multiple choice question. And this multiple choice question is only found in section A in the paper. So every multiple choice question, and there you will notice, starts with a stem in the form of a statement or question. So you first read your stem, and then four possible answers will be given for each one, and there's only one correct answer. So when answering your multiple choice questions, you read the stem and cover the four possible answers. Don't look at the answers at this stage. Think about the question and think of the correct answer. Then uncover the possible answers. And if you see an answer, circle it. If not, read through the answers and make sure it is correct. Um, please learners, never ever leave a multiple choice question unanswered. You have a 25% chance, if you really do not know the answer, you have a 25% chance of getting it right, much better than the lottery. So I suggest if you come back and there's one that is left open, please take a risk and answer it. Right, and also very important, do not write down two answers at any stage. If I can just go here, I just want to get a pen. So for instance, if you write in your answer book, A slash B, even if A is correct, they will not mark it correct end of the year. So there may not be two answers for the multiple choice questions at all. Right, so if we look here, I have two examples of a multiple choice question. Remember what I said? You read the stem of the answer, shape of DNA. So you can see it's in the exam guideline. You need to know who discovered the shape of the DNA, right? And your teacher, there's just two things in the history of DNA that you need to know. Who discovered the shape of the DNA? and who took x-ray films of it. Right, and now we know it's something to do with Watson and Crick. Um, so that's just Franklin. No, she discovered the x-ray. Franklin working independently. No, Watson and Crick working independently means alone. No, so the correct option here would then be, if I can just get my pen again, it would be D. So your option is D, Watson and Crick using some evidence obtained from Franklin. And the evidence that they got was Franklin took the first X-ray film of DNA, but she was never acknowledged for that. Right, if we look at the next one, let me just get my pointer here again. One strand of DNA has 60 adenine, let me just underline with my pen. So it's DNA. And we know DNA is a double strand. So there's 60 adenine in the one strand and 20 thymine in the one strand. So if this is my one strand, I have 60 adenine nitrogen bases. And I'm not going to put down 60, but there's 60 of them. Let's just put there 60 adenine. And, and in the one strand, I have thymine and I have 20 thymine in this one strand. How many adenine are present in the double stranded DNA? Right, now we need to work it out. There's 60 adenine in the strand, 20 thymine in the strand. So in the complementary strand, there will be 60 thymine and 20 adenine, meaning how many 
adenine do I have in the strand 60 plus 20? So my correct option is 80. I know this was a bit of a challenging one, but I do know our learners got this one correct. Are there any questions on this particular question? Okay, then we can move forward. We also have matching columns. Now we know we get the biological terms. Those are the easiest ones. Our matching columns in this one is, this question is also found in section A in the paper and it's usually 1.3. And normally they give you a key to be used to present your answers according to the key. So they would actually tell you, if we just move forward, there's an example. Indicate whether each one of the descriptions, so the description is normally found in column one, and two statements are given in column two. So you must match whether only the first statement, A only, B only, both A and B, or none of the items match the statement. Right, let's have a look at this one and please answer according to the key. The key says your answer must be A only, B only, both A and B or none. So let's have a look at this one. In column one, they tell me found in the nucleus. Now we look at the items. Is DNA found in the nucleus? Yes, it is. So I would put a tick. Is RNA found in the nucleus? Yes, some of it is there. So both items match the statement. So what is my obvious answer going to be? Both A and B. The other two I will not answer now because some of you have not gotten to my osis yet. These are just tips on how to answer questions in life sciences. Right, we've been through the exam guidelines. I'm not going to work through it. Once again, I want to emphasize to the learners and the teachers, please make sure that your learners have a copy of the exam guidelines 2021, because there you will see 27 marks on this section of the work will be asked in your final exam. Right, then we continue. Now, in this first chapter, you will know there's quite a lot of terminology used. I'm sure you were very overwhelmed when you started this year with all this big new terminology that's being used. Right, so one of the terms is what happens in the nucleus because most of the stuff happens in the nucleus and a new term terms that learners normally confuse one of them is nucleolus and the other one is the nucleoplasm right we know in every cell in the body uh, sorry every cell is made up of a cell membrane and inside of the cell membrane is what we call let me just get here your cytoplasm now please do not confuse cytoplasm and cytosol cytoplasm means it's the fluid part of a cell which contains all the organelles. This is grade 10 work. So I suggest you go look at your grade 10 cell structure. But now your nucleus is situated is an organelle inside your cell. And there the cytoplasm has a special name referred to as the nucleoplasm. So be very, very careful, um, grade 12s. If I can just, I'm just going to go out of this quickly. I want to say discard, and then I just want to show you. Remember grade 10, structure of a cell? So if this is my cell, 
right? Then what do I have here? Here I have my nucleus. So everything here, the fluid part of the cell is referred to as my cytoplasm because it has all my organelles in it. Then I have my nucleus, a very important organelle inside the cell, surrounded by the nuclear membrane, which has little openings called the nuclear pore. And the cytoplasm of the nucleus is actually referred to as nucleoplasm. And this dark little stained body inside the nucleus, that is my nuclear holus. This is grade 10 work, so I do hope that our learners will go back and revise their grade 10 cell structure. But I had to bring it to your attention because learners struggle with nucleolus, nucleoplasm, cytoplasm, and ribosome. Now, if we look at the ribosome, it is a structure that is inside my cell where protein synthesis takes place. So these are important concepts that you need to know and understand. And the best is to understand it with a diagram. Then we also speak of, let me just get my pen back here. We speak of chromatin or chromatin network. That is the, and I'm just going to go here. It is the, when the cell is not dividing, we refer to these tangled thread-like structures we call the chromatin network. As soon as my cell starts dividing, then I call it a chromosome. So if that is my nucleus, just to give you an example, my chromatin network is like a tangled mess of thread-like structures. Now I know this is a non-dividing cell. As soon as my cell divides, what happens to those little threads? They actually form, if I could just get it, little structures like that, refer to as a chromosome. So if I look at the cell on this side, as if I make this A and I make this B, and I ask you which cell is a non-dividing cell, then my reason would, my answer would be B. Give a reason for your answer. It has chromatin network instead of chromosomes. Another term that learners often confuse is chromatid and centromere. Now, if I look at the structure of a chromosome, and it's very difficult trying to draw like this. A chromosome, so this would represent a chromosome made up of individual threads called chromatid. So that's a chromatid. A centromere is the structure that holds two chromatids together. So this little round structure here would then be my centromere. So please make sure you understand these terms. And teachers, I want you to emphasize this. Then we normally speak of, in this chapter, your teacher spoke of DNA and RNA. Now, it's very important to also know what the abbreviation stands for. DNA, deoxyribo, it is a nucleic acid. Remember, we get nucleic acids. If you look in your exam guidelines, it tells you you must know the two types of nucleic acids. And the two types of nucleic acids, the one is DNA, it has deoxyribose in it, and the one is RNA, it has ribose in it. So there you can see, where do I found DNA? We find it in the nucleus of all living cells, right? And what does it do? Two functions. There's my functions, I can highlight it or underline it. It carries the hereditary information, Right, and the other one we will see later on, it controls protein synthesis. You can actually write it in here. So by just looking at this little block here, I know DNA, where is DNA found? In the nucleus. A function of DNA, it carries the hereditary information. 
ordinate, it is always a single strand. Here you can see compared to DNA, it is a double helix. It is located in the nucleoplasm, meaning you find it in the nucleus and in the cytoplasm. And it is always a single strand. And we later on, we will see what the bases are. If we look at the shape of DNA, it's a natural shape. The natural shape of DNA is called a helix or a DNA helix. Now you will you would have noticed your teacher speaks of monomers and polymers. Remember, mono means one, means only one. Okay, poly means many, mer means building block. So what is a monomer? It is a single building block, a single unit that makes up a larger molecule. It is just a generic term. Poly means it is a large molecule that is formed from monomers. And in grade 10, you did examples of polymers, your proteins, your nucleic acids, your carbohydrates, your fats are all polymers. Right, then you have a new term that you also encountered now in grade 12 is nucleotide. Now, what is a nucleotide? It is a building block or a monomer of RNA and DNA. So let's, for instance, say in your biological terms, you are asked the monomer of nucleic acids, then your answer will be nucleo. Tied. Or they could say the monomer of RNA, your answer would still be nucleotide. The monomer of DNA, your answer would still be nucleotide. Now, what are these building blocks? The nucleotide, very important, consists of three parts. A pentose sugar, a phosphate iron, and a nitrogenous base three parts of a nucleotide and make sure you know the structure of a nucleotide. We are going to have a look at it later on. You would also have encountered amino acid. Amino acids are also building blocks, monomers, but they are the monomers of proteins. So do not confuse these two. Right, then another term I should have put this one first, you will hear, remember we said a nucleotide is made up of nitrogenous bases. Now there are four nitrogenous bases, adenine, or we could use the abbreviation A, except it, thymine, T, guanine, G, cytosine, C. But there's an extra one, uracil, and we will encounter this just now. Now, very important to note grade 12s. Say, for instance, in question two or question three, you are asked the nitrogenous base that pairs with thymine. Um, then your answer would be adenine. But in 1.2 in biological terms, we can no longer use abbreviations. But anywhere else in the paper, except in question 1.2, you can use the abbreviation A, T, G, C. Right, so cytosine always pairs with guanine. In any order, C pairs with G or G pairs with C in DNA, because remember RNA is a single strand. There is no base pairing. Thymine always pairs with adenine or vice versa. Adenine pairs with thymine. And therefore in DNA, you will have the same amount as cytosine as guanine and the same amount of thymine as adenine. Uracil is a base only found in RNA and not DNA. Very, very important. Here I would put NB, notably. This is very important information. Uracil is not found in DNA. 
Right. Now, where do we get DNA? Remember, we mentioned DNA can be found in three places. It can be found in the nucleus. That is where most of your DNA is found, where it makes up your genes on the chromosomes. But you can also find DNA in animal cells in your mitochondria. And then we refer to it as mitochondrial DNA. In plants, DNA can also be found in the chloroplast. Right, now, very important question. I think two years back they mentioned, or the question was, name two places in an animal cell where DNA is found. Then the answer can only be mitochondria and nucleus. Because remember, animal cells do not contain chloral plus. Right, then I'm going to come back to transcription and translation. I do not want to confuse you at this stage. At this stage, I just want to look and see if there's anything in the chat. I can see there is a school that mentioned that they've done meiosis, but meiosis I will do on the 7th of March. I think it's going to be very unfair towards the other schools if I complete meiosis or talk about meiosis now, Valhalla. So we will get back to meiosis on the 7th of March. We're only going to do meiosis. Right. Now you'd have noticed your teacher, these are just terminologies, would have spoken of codon, anticodon, base triplets. Remember on your DNA, you have, there would be your bases, your nitrogen bases. Three bases would be referred to as a base triplet. In RNA, we speak of a codon. In tRNA, so please, that link is important. Codons is an mRNA. In DNA, we speak of a base triplets. So one mRNA contains a number of codons. We will go through that just now when we do some examples. So please do not um, stress about that. Right. Then we also have. Hydrogen bonds and peptide bonds. Where do we get hydrogen bonds? Remember we said DNA is a double strand. So there you have a base and there you have a base. There you have a base and there you have a base. Let's just make three. These bases are kept together to make the double strand by weak hydrogen bonds. So your hydrogen bonds are found between your base pairs in DNA. But once we form our proteins, right, and your tRNA picks up the different amino acids. Remember your tRNA is a little structure like that. I will do an example. So it will pick up the anticodon would pick up the amino acid, another amino acid, and they are joined together. That bond is your peptide bond between two adjacent amino acids. And then just before we go to examples, what is a gene? There you can see it is a part of a chromosome that controls each characteristic and it is made up of pieces of DNA. But we will do that later on. And then when we speak of a genome, it is all the genes present in an organism. Remember, for every characteristic in an organism, you have a gene and that we will do in genetics later on. Then we will refer to that in more detail. Right, let's go to our very first example. Let me just find out if we are all still on par. Let me just go quickly here to the chat and make sure. I see there are no questions in the chat, so I can continue. There are no hands raised, so I will continue. Right, now very important. Remember grade 12's? In the exam, 
you will always have a stem or a question or sorry, a statement before you have a diagram. Now, I really want to give you a tip today. Do not look at the questions first. So here they tell you it's a diagram of a DNA molecule. Right, it is not RNA. So already you have studied what is DNA. DNA has a double strand. So there I can see here's strand one and there is strand two. Now I could first try and make sense of the diagram. So here I have my first strand and there I have my second strand. What did I say just now? What keeps, so these would be my basis. The steps of the DNA is my basis. The sides of my DNA, very important, is made up, a nucleotide is made up of phosphate, and we can't write sugar. Because it's DNA, what type of sugar do I have? Deoxyribose sugar. Right, now very important, and this learners get very confused with this. If I got my base, then my base is always attached to my sugar. So all these little shapes would be my deoxyribose. That would be my deoxyribose. So now I know, before I even look at my question, number two would refer to deoxyribose. You cannot write sugar in the exam because you get different types of sugar. In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. In RNA, the sugar is ribose. And then my sugar is attached to my phosphate. So those little round circles represent my phosphate. Remember what we said, a nucleotide is made up of a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. So that would be one nucleotide. Does it make sense? Yeah, I have thymine. We said thymine always pairs with adenine. So you fill it in before you look at your questions. Guanine always pairs with cytosine. Now, I don't have any clue here, but that and that is the same shape. So that must be C. And then that and that is the same shape. So that must be G. That and that is the same shape. So that must be C. And then that one must be G. Let's look at one. One is the same shape as that one. So it must be adenine and it always pairs with thymine. Now I understood my diagram. Now I have a look at my questions. And my first question is, provide a label for one. But now you can see I already have a label. So now I know it is adenine. Why? If, for instance, they had asked you a reason, you would say it matches the same shape as T. There you can see if that's T, that must be adenine. So that must be adenine and it always pairs with thymine. They want a label for number two. Because I understood my diagram, I know number two must be deoxyribose sugar, right? You cannot write sugar. A label for number three, and I know the, the, sorry, the nitrogen bonds of DNA is kept together by weak hydrogen bonds. Let's look at the next question. The, give the number of nucleotides shown in the diagram. What is the examiner testing? They are testing to know if you know what a nucleotide is. And what did we say? A nucleotide is made up of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. So a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base, meaning that is one. So how many nucleotides do I have in this diagram? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Does that make sense to you, grade 12s? There you can see I've given you an explanation. A nucleotide is made up of sugar, phosphate, and a nitrogen base. 
So therefore, this molecule has 10 nucleotides. Question 1.3. Give one difference. Now, very important. They only want one difference between the nitrogen bases in DNA and those in RNA. They are not asking me a general difference. So you cannot write DNA has deoxyribose. It is incorrect. Which nitrogen base is found in DNA? Thymine. And which nitrogen base is found in RNA? Uracil. There is no thymine. And that's your two answers. DNA has thymine, whereas RNA has uracil. Remember the question asked for the differences between nitrogen bases and not any other structural or functional difference. So read your question very, very clear. Can I just at this stage find out if there are any questions? Please do not hesitate to ask. This is why we have these tutoring sessions, grade 12. So that you can have an understanding and at least score 27 marks out of the 150 marks just on this section. Okay, it seems like there are no questions in the chat. I don't know, Melissa or Oriel, if there are any questions on the WhatsApp group. I don't see anything in the chat, so I am going to continue. Right, here's our very, very first example. Now, once again, these are exam-based questions. The diagram represents some nucleotides in a single strand of DNA. So they're not showing me the other strand. And remember what I said, grade 12, you first try and make sense of the diagram. So if it's DNA, why do we say it's DNA? Can anybody give me a reason? Why do we say this diagram is DNA and why can it not be RNA? I'm waiting for a answer. Why can this diagram not be RNA? Or I should rephrase the question, give an observable reason why this is a DNA molecule. Let's just say that was one of the questions. What would your answer be, grade 12? I am waiting. It's rather quiet. I'm sure grade 12s, you know this answer. Why is this molecule? Let's say in the question end of the year, they give you this diagram and they say it is a single strand of DNA and the very first question is, Give a visible reason why this is a DNA molecule. Why is it a DNA molecule? Come, we can, we know the answer. What does DNA have that RNA does not have? Ariel or Melissa? Well done. I think it is Marion High School says it has the nitrogen base thymine. Well done. So from this diagram, uh, sorry, it has thymine. So it cannot be RNA. We cannot write, if I ask a visible reason, we cannot say it is a double strand because here yeah, they say it is a single strand. So if that's thymine, guanine, adenine, and cytosine. Thymine is always attached to which molecule? So what would my sugar be? What would molecule Y be? What would this be? I am waiting. Well done, Voorberg also came up that it's thymine. 
And here, for instance, you can use T, G, A, and C because it is not biological terms. I want to know which one here. The circle represents the, remember, a nucleotide is made up. What did we say? A phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. Those are the elements of a nucleotide. So here I have a nitrogen based thymine. Which one of these two are going to represent my phosphate and which one is going to be my sugar? Come now grade 12s. Well done, Marion High School. Marion High School says all the circles represent the phosphate. Well done, Marion. Meaning X is phosphate. And then obvious, they say the hexagon is the sugar, meaning Y is my sugar. But can I write sugar in the exam? Because they say it is DNA. Well done, Marion High School. My sugar must be deoxyribose. And now I've understood my diagram. Now I go to my questions. They want the letter of the part that represents a sugar. Because I filled it in. Which letter represents a sugar? I'm waiting for the answer. X or Y or T, G, A, or C. Come now, grade 12s. Athlone School says the sugar, okay, and is represented by the Pentagon. And Marion says the sh sugar is Y. I hope everybody else got the Y there. I see the answers are coming in. Well done, Valala. And which one represents the phosphate? Which one is the phosphate? The letter. Read very carefully, Valala. The sugar is represented by Y and the phosphate is represented by X. Have a look at your answer, Valala. You've got B phosphate, A, Y. Remember, they want the letter of the sugar, which is Y. The phosphate is X. Well done. Voorbrug also got it right. Now, let's go to 1.5.2. Remember, we've gone through the content. We are looking for the application of this content. How many nucleotides are present in this diagram? I am waiting for the first correct answer. So what is my examiner testing? Do I know what a nucleotide consists of. And yeah, I've told you a nucleotide is made up of a sugar, sorry, a phosphate and a nitrogen base. So normally just count your number of nitrogen bases. So how many nucleotides are present in this diagram? I'm waiting. Well done, Marion High School. They say four. That's one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. I hope it makes sense to everyone. So there are four nucleotides. Then I have write down 1.5.3. Write down the nitrogen base from top to bottom. Let me just go here quickly. I just want to er erase all the ink. Write down the base from Top to bottom, meaning starting here at, let me get my pen again. Starting from there, down. Oh, sorry, apologies, apologies. I wanted to get a pen. Let's take a different color pen. I don't know why it's not giving me an option to use my pen. Okay, let me just use the laser from top to bottom. Hello? Of the complementary DNA. So what would my complementary DNA be from top to bottom? Let me hear. What is my complementary DNA? From top to bottom, what would, the, what would that one be? Well, I see I've got some answers. You check your answers. So it would be A, C, 
T A G. Well done. So you could either write it A C T G below each other, or you could write it A C T N G. G. That would be my base. Well done, Voorbrug. Well done, um, Marion High School. Right. 1.5.4. Name two processes that require the two strands of a DNA molecule to separate. Which two allows them to separate? I'm waiting on an answer. Which two processes allows my DNA to separate. Remember, DNA is normally a double strand. Which two processes did your teacher tell you allows them to separate? Replication and um, oh. transcription only. Translation occurs in the ribosome, not in the uh, DNA. Okay, I see there's a teacher emphasizing what we've done in class. So which two processes? I think that was Yechia Meiren. Oh. <laughs> I can hear Miss Moodley there in the background. <laughs> Getting very upset with them, not remembering. Remember, we had two processes where we had DNA as a double helix, and then they separate and which processes allow them to separate? The one was replication during DNA replication, and the other one was during transcription. Well done, Atlan School. DNA replication and transcription. Valala also got it correct. Well done to you guys. Please note, because you must understand your work, grade 12. Can you see life science is about application of your work? It is not just straightforward. You need to understand what is being taught and then apply your work and therefore use diagrams to understand. Don't just study questions with memos. Very important. Right. Yeah, I've got another example. Oh. Why do I have? Oh, my golly gook. I have an Afrikaans question. <laughs> I have an Afrikaans question in the English. Okay, I will have to translate as we go along. So the diagram represents a part of a DNA molecule. And there they're telling me this is strand one and this is strand two. Now, once again, let's make sense of the diagram. If this on this side, you can just mute your mics at this stage. I apologize for the slide. I will send the correct slide to your teacher tomorrow. Okay, so that would be strand one. And then I'm just going to get a different pen. Let's just take a red pen. And that is strand two. I need to make sense. Once again, W are the bonds that hold it together. So what would my bonds be that hold the two strands of a DNA together? Let me hear in the chat. Remember my two strands are kept together by hydrogen bonds. So now I know W are my weak hydrogen bonds. Well done. So this would be, if that is a phosphate, remember my base, this is my nitrogen base. At this stage, I don't have a clue because they're not telling me which nitrogen base. So that would be my nitrogen base. Because it's DNA, that would be my deoxyribose and that would be my phosphate. Right, I'll just translate as we go along for today. Identify molecule X. So what would X be? Let me hear the correct answer for X. Okay, I see some of you says X is thymine. But how do I know it's thymine? Please remember, and I need to tell you this and your teachers this. 
the shape does not necessarily the textbooks just use shapes to indicate the differences between the nitrogen bases and over the years they've used these little ones with the sharp edges as adenine and thymine but what's very important here they want you to identify it's a nitrogen base okay so not necessarily so if you wrote thymine they would give you the the correct um more answer but in this case x is a nitrogen base because we don't know whether they nowhere on the diagram do they give us a clue whether that is adamine sorry that is adenine or this is cytosine and guanine so that's a nitrogen base what is the sugar at y because it's dna what is the sugar my sugar must be deoxyribose. So that would be a nitrogen base or a nitrogenous base. That would be, and please do not use abbreviations as I'm doing here, that would be deoxyribose. And the bond at W would be my weak hydrogen bond. And once again, apologies to teachers, I will send you the slide tomorrow on page seven with the correct answer. Give the collective name of part X, Y, and Z. What is the collective name? What is X plus Y plus Z called? A nucleotide. What is the natural form of DNA called? I'm waiting for one, four, three. The natural shape of DNA. It is a double helix. Name the process where DNA makes a copy of itself. Which process, during which process does DNA make a copy of itself? Come now, grade 12s. I know your teacher's done this with you. Well done, Marion High, DNA replication. Then we want to know, name two places in an animal cell, very important, where DNA is found. We know DNA is found three places. Also well done to Valhalla Secondary for that answer of double helix and DNA replication, one, four, five. Two places in an animal cell where DNA is found. Read very carefully. It's about an animal cell. So the only two correct answers must be the chat is rather quiet. Marion High's got one mark for mitochondria. It's two marks. So we're waiting for the other mark. Come, I need you to score 27 marks for this section of the work. Well done, Marion High School. They've got two marks, two places in an animal cell where DNA is found, in the mitochondria and the nucleus. You cannot write chloroplasts because there are no chloroplasts present in an animal cell. Well done to Athlone School. You also have mitochondria and nucleus. Right, let's continue. Then very important, I've given you a summary. Remember earlier on I asked you the processes involved. There are three processes in this topic. Transcription, translation, and DNA replication. And please, if there's anything that I want you to do, grade 12, is to study this parrot fashion. We know these two processes, transcription and translation, they are involved in, if I can just ask, someone's mic is on. There's a microphone on. Or if I can just ask Melissa or Fergus or Ariel to just mute everyone at this stage. Thank you very much, colleagues. During protein synthesis, there are two processes involved, transcription and translation. 
right? Transcription, we know, takes place in the nucleus. And there you can see it is from DNA, very important. It is the process that goes from DNA to mRNA. That is transcription, and that is in the nucleus. Right. Translation is the translating of the amino acids from mRNA to tRNA. And this process we know takes place at my ribosomes in my cytoplasm. Very important. And there you can see, remember DNA is in a double helix. So you get a mark for the DNA unwinds. You get a mark for it, the hydrogen bonds break. And what happens to the two strands? They separate. But very important, this in red, in red, only one strand is used as a template to form RNA. And the RNA is complementary to DNA. So if my DNA is T A C G, what's my RNA going to be during transcription? Remember, it is complementary, meaning it is opposite. So if this is on my DNA T A C G, what do the complementary strand of mRNA be? I am waiting on an answer. Let me see here in the chat if I have. Proteus, I know the previous slide was in Afrikaans and I apologize for that. I will send question 1.4 to your teachers tomorrow in English with the correct answer. I want to know, I've given you, I said during transcription, my DNA was thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. What would the complementary mRNA be for this strand? Why are we so quiet, grade 12s? The complementary strand thymine always pairs with adenine. Adenine, but now it's RNA, so it cannot be adenine. It needs to be A, U, C, sorry, G, and E. I hope all of you have that. Translation, you also need to study. There are some schools that have their microphones on. If I can just ask the moderators to please mute this school at this stage. Right. Remember the difference between transcription and translation. All the steps are the same except the ones in red. So here where you have one strand is used as a template in replication, each DNA serves as a template. Very important. And at the end, two identical DNA molecules are formed. If I can give you any advice, it's please study these three processes as is, verbatim, parrot fashion. One of them will be asked in the exam. Right, another question, and now it's time for me to take a break and for you to read. The diagram below represents a process. Now, please read your information given. A process that occurs during protein synthesis. Which two processes takes place during protein synthesis? I don't want the answer now. I really don't want the answer. I am asking you, which two processes takes place during protein synthesis? So my answer can only be either transcription or translation, nothing else, right? So 
where does transcription take place? In the nucleus. Is this the nucleus? No. Where does translation take place? At the ribosome. So this process must be translation. Does it make sense? So now I'm making sense of my diagram. So if this is the ribosome, what molecule attaches to the ribosome at V? I'm waiting for an answer for V. I want to know which molecule attaches to the ribosome. Which molecule V attaches to the ribosome? So V must indicate my mRNA. Well done, Atlone. So if that is my mRNA, I know my mRNA carries my codons. Then this molecule with the little three prongs must be my, that must be my tRNA. And what does my tRNA carry? It carries there my anticodons. So you first make sense of the diagram. You don't look at the questions. Remember when I said right at the beginning, multiple choice questions, read the question. So that would be my anticodon carried by my tRNA. And what does it pick up in the cytoplasm? It picks up S my amino acids. And it brings the amino acids here to form a chain of amino acids called a polypeptide because it's not an amino acid, uh, sorry, a protein yet. Now, which of the following statements is correct? Remember, I have two minutes for a multiple choice. In life science, I have 150 marks, one mark per minute. So if a multiple choice is two minutes, I can spend two minutes on a multiple choice. But because I have all my answers here, does S represent an anticodon? No. Because according to me, S represents my amino acid. Does W represent a mRNA? No, because according to me, W is my polypeptide. Does T represent my tRNA? According to me, that is the correct one. But let's read all of them. Does U represent an amino acid? No, because I know U is my anticodon. So my correct answer is. C. Well done, Valhalla High School. It's C. It's the an answer of the question. Come. Oh, sorry. C is the answer from Proteus Technical High School. Well done, Proteus. Voorbrug also got to the answer C. Right. Here we have another question. And here I really need you to work with me, grade 12s. The diagram below represents two processes. And once again, remember what I said, you underline two processes during protein synthesis. Ding, the little thing goes on in my brain. What two processes do I know in protein synthesis? Before I even look at my diagram, I make little notes here, my two processes, that my teacher and Ms. Fortain said is called transcription and translation. Right, so I know it's that. So remember, I made the one going from DNA to mRNA is my transcription. Going from mRNA to a protein is called translation. So now it's easy. So this must be transcription and that must be transcription. Well done, Where in the cell? Now they're not asking me which one is it. They want to know where does each of the following occur? Where does X occur? Now I know X is transcription, but where in the cell does X trans uh, occur? 
Now, once again, Asibalala is making a common mistake. Read the question. I did not ask what is process X and Y. I want to know where in the cell does X occur? Well done, Marion. X is in the nucleus. And where does Y translation? In the cytoplasm, but where specifically at the ribosome? That is more specific. Well done, Proteus. Well done, Valala. Well done, Marion. Fergus or Melissa or Ariel, if you can just mute. Um, Send a message. I'm just waiting on one of the schools to please mute their microphone so we can continue. It Sorry, is I'm Valentine's right. Day, yeah. and I think everyone wants to go and celebrate after this love lesson. Right. Now, state, not tabulate, state a difference between the types of bases found in DNA and RNA. Which base is in DNA? You must just state it. So I would just write DNA, and you can't just write thymine and uracil. How are they going to know? DNA has thymine, RNA has uracil. Well done. I think it is Proteus that just wrote DNA, thymine, RNA, uracil. Two easy marks. State. You don't have to tabulate. You don't have to write long sentences. Well done, Proteus High School. Now they're asking you name and describe process X. Now, yeah, we already determined what is process, process X. It's called transcription. So you're going to start off with transcription one compulsory mark and then you describe transcription and just going back to our slide there that is what you're going to describe and any of those five it's one for naming transcription and five any five bullets here will be the correct answer to 2.1.3 and therefore i told you please grade 12s make sure you study transcription translation and dna replication off by heart right we're going to get to another question here example three study the diagram which shows part of the process of protein synthesis Ding! little red light goes on Protein synthesis, it's either transcription or translation. Here's my clue, it's at the ribosome. So it can only be translation. So I fill this information in. So later on, when I look at my questions, I do not get confused at all. Now they want to know, so if that's transcript, uh, sorry, translation, then this must be my M. RNA because it attaches to my ribosome. There they're telling me this is my ribosome. Right. So then Z, sorry, that here must be my tRNA, which picks up my anticodons. So that would be, sorry, here we go. This would be my anticodon, and these must be my amino acids. Identify the stage of protein synthesis shown in the diagram. There was my clue. Which stage is that? 2.1. I'm waiting for the answer for 2.1. Which stage of protein synthesis is shown in the diagram? Well done, Marion. High translation. My clue is there at the ribosome. Identify molecules X and Y. So now I go and look. 
Here I am picking it up. X is my, and where is Y? Let's just find Y. I can't, oh yes, Y is my mRNA, and X is my tRNA. Right, that structure there is my tRNA, and what does my tRNA pick up here at V? My anticodon. State the term for the group of three bases indicated by V, and it must be my anticodon, because my tRNA is associated with my anticodon. Please remember, grade 12, DNA, three bases, base triplets. mRNA, three bases, codons. tRNA, three bases, anticodons. If you remember that, you will never go wrong. Give the base on the DNA strand that codes for the base UAU -U on molecule Y. So, yeah, there you, that is a codon. So, they want to know which three bases on DNA would code for UAU. -U. So I need to work backwards to my DNA. So to get the U, it had to pair with adenine. Adenine paired with thymine and ATA. Am I correct? Well done. There is ATA coming through from Marion, from um, what is this, Valhalla? Well done. I am very impressed. 2.5. Use the table below to identify amino acid W. So let's go look at W. W is an amino acid that is made up of the codons UAU. And in this table, I don't have codons. I have tRNA. Right. So to get UAU, it needs the complementary base, uracil, sorry, pairs with adenine. Does it make sense? Adenine, there's no thymine, so it must be U, and U pairs with A. So I go look for U, sorry, A, U, A, and my correct answer here. The amino acid is well done, Valhalla tyrosine. I am very, very, very impressed. Name and describe the process that occurs in the nucleus to produce Y. Which process? Name and describe, exactly like the previous question. So it is about transcription and people. That's why I said study transcription and translation. Transcription for one mark and describe it for four other marks. Well done to you guys. Right, we're going to quickly move on because it is already quarter past. Process of DNA replication. I'm not going to go through it. There are five steps involved. Make sure you study the sequence correctly. There I have a double strand. And at the end of DNA replication, I have two identical double strands. This is just a visual representation of the process. Okay. Right. Then we also in this topic do DNA profiling. Now, DNA profiling is obtained by taking DNA from either, remember, you can take blood samples, saliva samples, uh, um, semen samples to get DNA bands. We don't just, and we don't speak of a DNA fingerprint. So in this instance, in a car accident, the biological father of the girl and three other men were killed. The men could not be identified due to their injuries. And here we're using DNA profiling was used to identify the girl's father. So here's the girl's DNA bands. Here's the mother's DNA bands. And we know half of our DNA comes from our mother and the other half comes from our father. Because we don't, do not know the identity of the father, we first match her with the mother. So that one is the mother's DNA. This one 
is a mom's DNA, and this band is a mom's DNA. So there are two bands left that had to come from a father. So now I go look at the men's DNA. That one matches. Are you with me? But that doesn't match. But here, that one matches, and that one matches. So which one of the men is most likely to be the father of the girl? It must be B. Well done, Proteus. It must be B, um, male three. And that is how we do DNA profiles. Here's another example. That was a multiple choice question. Diagram shows the DNA profiles of six members of a family. They have similarity in the position of the bands, right? The parents. So here's the parents. Zinle and Ayanda are the parents. They have four children. Now, two of these children are their biological offspring. Now, remember, half of our DNA comes from our mother and half comes from our father, while the other are adopted. And here they want to know which two children are the biological offspring. So let's look at Zinle, right? That, I've got one match there for Zinle. I don't have, and I've got a match there for Zinle. So the others had to come from the mother. That one comes, sorry, from Ayanda. So that matches, that matches with the mom and that matches with the mom and that matches with the dad. So now we know Lindiwe is one of the biological children. Let's look at Gugu. That doesn't match. That doesn't match. That doesn't match. None of the bands match, so Gugu cannot be a biological child. Let's look at Bandile. There's one match there. There's a match there with Zinle. There's another match there with Zinle. That one matches Ayanda. That one matches Ayanda. And that one matches Zinle. So we, Bandile is a child. So we said only two biological children which is Bandiwe and Bandile. I hope that makes sense. And then they want to know, give an explanation for your answer. Why did we say Lindiwe and Bandile? If you look at the DNA bands of Lindiwe and Bandile, it matches the DNA bands of Zinle and Ayanda. As simple as that. And remember, we don't just talk of bands, we speak of the DNA bands. Right, that should bring us, now, this was quite a mouthful, but I know your teachers also went through this. So what I want to do, I want to make sure that you guys understood what was um, tutored here today. So I'm going to give you a little post-test on biological terminology. There are 10 biological terms, and I want you to fill in the correct answer and well done Proti of Valhalla. I want the answers for 1 to 10. Let's see which school on this beautiful Valentine's Day can get 10 out of 10. Let's go. It starts right now. I see Valala is typing furiously here uh, in the chat box. Come now, there are others as well. Can't just be Valala in the house. Give them some competition. I see Athlone School is on there, right on to them. Can't just be Athlone and Valala. Marion has given me
The competition is fierce. I just love it. I just love it. Kambalala, you nearly there? You nearly there? And yet my teachers are going to be my referees this afternoon. Please make sure that each and every learner writes down on their notes or on a piece of paper that they write down one to 10. Because on Friday, your teacher is going to give you the same test, but scrambled biological terms. I'm still going to allow a minute. Wow, I love how the answers are coming through. Wow. Thank you, Fiergas. I think it's Valhalla that has completed one to 10. Now remember, very important, this is not just me speaking and tutoring and going through the motions of talking about this. Very important grade 12s. Your teachers are on a regular basis going to give you little short tests to consolidate, to make sure you understood what has been taught to you in class. Remember, it's your, for your own sake that you mark, you mark your own work. If you've got one out of 10 correct, that means at least you know one thing in this topic. Then you concentrate on the other nine. If you've got 10 out of 10, that means you know everything. Well done, you move on to the next topic. So it's very important to be very honest with yourself, okay? Right, let's see who got 10 out of 10. I'm going to go through the answers and I want the teachers. I know I've got quite Caitlin, Julie's. Duh, duh, duh. I've got Valhalla submitted all 10. I've got Caitlin, Julie's also submitted. That's from Puerbra High School. So let's have a look and see. I will come to your school and personally deliver a Valentine's chocolate to the schools. Right, let's go. The natural shape of a DNA molecule. The correct answer is double helix. So well done to those that got it right. I think all the answers that I'm seeing here is double helix. The type of sugar found in RNA. And the correct answer is ribose. Please do not confuse. We are speaking of RNA, so it can't be deoxyribose. It can't just be sugar. The correct answer here is ribose. The nitrogenous base found only in RNA. Remember, there are four nitrogenous, five nitrogenous bases. Adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. But which one is and uracil? Which one is found only in RNA? So number three is uracil. And thus far, I'm seeing everybody's got uracil. So well done. I am very, very proud of this grade 12 class of 2022. Yeah, number four, we want the bonds between bases in a DNA molecule. And the correct answer is hydrogen bonds. You can write weak hydrogen bonds, but please do not just write weak hydrogen. Okay, you, so it is the weak hydrogen bonds. The cell organelle to which mRNA attaches during protein synthesis and that, uh, sorry, the organelle, read very carefully, number five, because there are some of you that did not get number five. I'm just going here through the chat. Most of you got it right. The organelle is ribosome, number five. 
Number six, a section of DNA that codes for a specific characteristic, and that is a gene. Well done. The bonds between amino acids. Please do not confuse number seven and number four. Number four is the bonds between DNA, and here it is the bonds between amino acids, and this is peptide bonds. A barcode pattern formed from DNA, DNA profiling, please. They will not accept DNA fingerprint. A stage of protein synthesis during which mRNA forms from DNA, and that would be transcription. Well done. I'm seeing quite a lot of correct answers and the process by which DNA makes identical copies of its cell replication or DNA replication. Well done to the class this afternoon. I think most of the answers that came through here are the correct answers. And I hope you've done it on your own, because if you've done it on your own, you know most of the biological terms associated with this topic. So please keep it up. Do not forget to go back to your exam guidelines. Make sure that you cover each and every part of this topic to get that 27 marks. We are nearly done. Two minutes to go. But you know me, I'm a typical teacher. I cannot let you leave without homework. Now remember our next section uh, tomorrow, I want the teachers that are present here. Shame, and I do know it is Valentine's Day, but I'm sure somewhere, some of us do not have a Valentine, so let DNA be our matching base here. Here's a question on, and this is quite a higher order question. So what I want you after this afternoon session to please go grade 12s, read through this question, try and make sense of the question. If you do not understand the question, please go to your teacher tomorrow or Wednesday. I'm going to ask the teachers to be a bit lenient and mark this for homework for Friday. I know it's Valentine's Day and most of us just want to go and celebrate with the love of our lives. Um, so this is homework for Friday morning. You are going to write a biological term test for your teacher and you are going to make sure that you have the answers to this question. I will send the answers to the teachers, but please work through it. Make sure you understand because this is the format that questions can be asked in. Um, let me just see here on the chat. I hope I did not go too fast. Um, our next session will be on the 7th of March, where we're going to do meiosis. I hope all of you will tune in again. Um, I will pop in during school visits. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. I hope you have learned something. That is the most important aspect, that you have learned something. Even if you've learned one thing this afternoon, that is a highlight. So grade 12s from my side, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you to your teachers for tuning in today. Please, teachers, let your uh, complete the attendance register. I will put it up again now. And from my side, enjoy the afternoon, the rest of the afternoon, sending love and light to all the learners in grade 12 and to all our teachers. I know it is a difficult day to be having classes. It is hot, but I'm eternally grateful for you that tuned in. And as I mentioned, teachers, this lesson will be, the recording will be available later on for revision purposes. So from my side, thank you very much.